Upon arrival at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Robert Ouko noticed read the body language of both President Daniel Arab Moy and Nicholas Biwot. Then he realized a bit too late that uh, it is a bit too late. As usual, from JKIA, they had to have a debriefing at State House. It was uh, after that debriefing that uh, Robert Oko asked and was granted some few days off. He was granted some few days off to see his family and also to check on his constituencies. Those days, members of the cabinet were also members of the National Assembly. From there, uh, he somehow, I don't know whether it was a few minutes uh, later, a few hours later, or a few days later, he went to his office, and in his office was Mrs. Anguka, who was his secretary. First of all, I, there's a member of the Ouko family who claimed, and he was a very senior civil servant, who was more well-placed than me, but I think maybe the emotions and maybe vested interest and so on made him claim that upon arrival, Oko was sacked. No. In fact, in Moe's time when you are sacked, everybody knows because there used to be that Mara Moja, 1, uh, 1 p.m. news broadcast. So he was not sacked, and uh, he... He only told him he only told the president that in a few days time I'm going to lead a delegation to such and such a country. Can't recall which country it is. I'm going to lead a delegation to that country and I'm asking for permission to go home. And the permission was granted. He was not sacked. Okay, I'd reached a place where he had reached a place where he he entered his office and met Mrs. Anguka. I want to state it here, and I also interacted with Anguka later, much, much later, in Nakuru, uh, when he handed over the district to his uh, DO1, who was promoted to be DC, John Abduba. The relationship between the Angukas and the Okos at that particular time was cordial, period. So I can imagine, although she was his uh, secretary, but I was imagining I'm going home, uh, any message you'd want me to send to your people, okay, uh, whatever, uh, can you say this to your husband? Uh, say hi to your husband. And Miss Anguka would say, say hi to your wife. Such, such things. I would expect it to be that way. Although I, I would also expect, at that time, there are ways that uh, he could talk to the wife about the husband, but there are other things he could talk to the husband without even involving or even the knowledge of his wife. Such talkings were... Like when he assembled l prominent Luo leaders for what I'll just say. So from there, those days we, we had landlines, we did not have mobile. 
he went back uh, and organized uh, to meet prominent Luo leaders. This is how Moi used to operate. And I want to, to tell especially the young Kenyans who, may, who were not even born then. Moi used to localize things. He sacked, uh, even Kenyatta, Kenyatta sacked uh, Masinde Muruo and appointed Nathan Munoko. So you find that uh, when Ouko died, uh, uh, there is this, um, I'm forgetting, he's also from Kisumu, was, ma uh, was made the Minister for Foreign Affairs. He was made the Minister for Foreign Affairs. So you find that uh, anything happening to a Trukana, he's replaced by a Trukana. Even if it is not in that very same office, a Trukana can be placed, a tribe, a tribe mate can be placed in the same position somewhere else, and then where he has been placed, that person comes to take care. That is one. You remove somebody, you replace him with somebody from his place. Again, if you have a problem, if you are a Kikuyu and you have a problem, send Kikuyu elders. So it is in that knowledge that uh, Ouko used uh, lo prominent Luo powerful people to, to assist him. He wanted them to go and tell President Moi that everything that is hearing is nothing I, I has no iota of truth. So these people accepted to meet him and they, they, they accepted and said, uh, you know, the problem in Kenya is that the special branch, and it is true, I have recorded elsewhere that uh, authoritatively that Mrs. Ngugi Wathiongo used to spy on Ngugi Wathiongo. Special branch went so low that they could use anybody against anybody. I read somewhere, I don't know which country it was, where intelligence was so used that the watchman at your gate is spying on all of you. The secretary, your secretary is spying on all of you. In, she's even spying on the watchman, and the watchman is spying on her. And you, you are spying on the watchman, and you are spying on the secretary, you are spying on, everybody's spying on each other. Special branch headed that direction. So this prominent Luo said that if we come to visit you, one or more of your domestic employees may disclose our visit. So we want to visit you where none of your employees is there. Please take note of that. It is them who requested that. Then, Ouko did not bet on one horse. He went to Kericho to meet Peter Kibiego Lagat. Peter Kibiego Lagat was a nephew you know, this thing is a bit complicated unless you come from a certain tribe or anything because you find uh, among the Bukusu, Eugene Wamalo is my brother. Uh, <laughs> but if, you, if I have to define Eugene Wamalo in English, I'd say his father, uh, William Wamalo, Mze, and my father, were first cousins. So we are sons of first cousins. So Eugene is my second cousin. But in Kibukusu, Eugene is my brother. So when uh, we, we, we talk about uh, those things among other tribes, it becomes a bit of a challenge. So uh, Peter Kibiego Lagat was a nephew of Moi. He, he, I don't know whether he's dead. He's, he's a nephew of Moi. And Ouko 
that is why I why I'm saying I don't know whether it is an immediate nephew or a distant nephew or whatever. Well, that is why I gave that example of first cousin, second cousin, and so on. So, uh, he decided uh, to go and see the president's nephew in Kericho. He went to Kericho, talked to the president. Then he said he'll look into that. But you see, when he uh, when he booked an appointment to meet, uh, you see, when you're in problems, a minister can book an appointment with the county commissioner, isn't it? But when you don't, you are not in a problem. It is the reverse. So he, when he booked an appointment, uh, information was passed. Information was passed. Information was passed to a special branch. Uh, then he went there. He, he he underwent what is called hostile surveillance. Hostile surveillance. He knew he was being followed. He went and met uh, Peter Kibiego Langat. They discussed. They uh, whatever he said, he'll see what he'll do. And when he was going back to Kisumu, there was an accident, which is mirror image of Bishop Muge's accident. Now, when he had that accident. Uh, being a member of NSAC, National Security and Advisory Committee, he knew such things. Of course, he had already undergone uh, vetting and training. So he he, he hiked a, a tractor and was driven all the way to Kisumu Agakan Hospital. And you see, uh, I told the Parliamentary Select Committee I told the Parliamentary Select Committee that uh, that man is not alive, the, tra the tractor driver, and they went and confirmed. Again, when he was in Kisumu, he attended a Lions uh, meeting. And uh, a lot of people, you see, <laughs> we have a story of blind men with an elephant. So they held an elephant. There is one who held the, the tusks. There is another one who held the legs. And the, the, there is another one who held the tail. The one who held the tail said, Hey, people say elephants are big. The elephant is just a small carop. And the one who said, Ah, elephant is as big as a trunk of tree. And another one said, oh, easy. An elephant is as hard as cement because he had held the tasks. Propagandist looked at the way uh, Oko was praising Moi in the Lions uh, dinner party, not knowing that uh, <clears throat> he was using a God-given opportunity to praise Moi before press, before people, so that the information reaches there and Moi changes his mind. People didn't see that. Again, he went to church. When he went to church, you can see the kind of reading he chose. This is somebody who was under immense stress. Then uh, finally, we now go to Gotalila. The day comes. You know, when you are working for these uh, politicians, you live a very funny way. You stay in a free house, you have free food. He, pay, he or she pays fees and medical. Nowadays it is uh, NHIF or SHIF. So everything is taken care of you. And you may find that you spend several months without pay. So when he came, he called all these employees and gave them a made to understand five months salary and requested them you know you are called aside you have a lot of money you are told now i've given you a, a few days off you a day or two off you don't even add you, you you think that you are the only one who has been given a day off so from there you go everyone was everybody i'm explaining why he was alone that time selena Getting, Selena were getting her money. Uh, Selena were getting her money. She decided to have a bash. 
and you see bash includes taking alcohol so when they were going this story of uh, her seeing uh, his bodyguard tiptoeing and whatever no that is a uh, people coming up with that story it is only that uh, in rural areas especially those days toilets in the houses were not there toilets used to be out so when she was going for a, a call of nature uh, she had a commotion and she had uh, the minister making a sound like that of a goat which is going to be killed so she came back and said and you see if you are not sober you <laughs> there are things you, if you are sober you would uh, you'd go and find out isn't it then he said hey <laughs> japon they used to call him japon japon i think it's teacher uh, the teacher has made funny noise there now oko thought he was alone oko thought he was alone in the compound he thought he was alone in the compound so he, when the vehicles came there was obviously a white car the nani's official vehicle anguka's official vehicle anguka did not go there but he sent his driver and bodyguard so he saw uh, anguka's vehicle and when he went to open the door for the, the gate for them that is when he saw you see in kenya there is only people from rift valley who who cut their ears and make it a knob those are kalenjins and masai among others but they are only found in rift valley so when he found GSE officers he tried to run away and that is when he was caught when he was caught he was placed in the car boot and driven off to nakuru when he was being driven off to nakuru they went reached a uh, kericho for fueling when they reached kericho, kericho for fueling he noticed that the vehicle was not moving or anything and the place was Uh, a bit different so he kicked the the boot and it got opened and there he saw uh, there was the pump attendant with his pipe and there was also those people who had kidnapped him uh, a pistol was placed to the ear of the pump attendant and he was told just fuel the vehicle and pretend you never saw anything i don't know what went through his mind if he is still alive he could tell us because imagine you are just as a mere a simple pump attendant and then you see somebody did he, did it even occur to him that that person was a minister did it even occur to him that it was just an ordinary person he was so confused but he sold them fuel the way they wanted and they went on between kericho and nakuru a vehicle, the vehicle, the 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 convoy stopped the convoy stopped and he was taken out and then he was told nikinyoriro gani hii ulikuwa unajaribu kuleta nikinyoriro sasa fan that is where his leg was was broken and then he was driven with pains to state house nakuru upon state reaching state house nakuru he was taken to a room in state house there used to be and i think there is still are various commands for example the military have their own command president is a, is a command and chief and they they are given instructions by the adc we jamana simamaga nyuma president uh we have the cid there doing their own work they, we have the intelligence there doing their own work under their own command those are three then we have GSU two two different companies there we have uh, the GSU at the gate who are called uh, G company then we have the REC company and then we have the regular police who are called presidential escort but if you look at the presidential escort especially those days most of them used to be GSU officers whom even after their tour of duty in the presidential escort they would go back to so in the among the intelligence command there were two inspectors of police one was called ngarwa kinyanjui and the other one was called wekesa wekesa forgotten his name he is from he was from misiho 
those are the two officers who told me, but I'll elaborate about it uh, in the deaths of witnesses. So he was taken at a place, a room, where he was kneeling before. Uh, he was kneeling, sweating, pained, crying before Moi. And uh, Moi was in front of him. Uh, Biwot was on his left and he was going undergoing something that was similar to an interrogation. When he was being interrogated, he, uh, Mo, he, he, he was just being asked to do a simple thing, apologize and promise never to undermine the president. But he was saying that he was a genuine friend and he could not do anything against the, his, his boss and friend. Then uh, Biwot pretended to be annoyed. Biwot pretended to be annoyed and took out a pistol and shot him. Now shooting uh, has various ways of shooting. Uh, you'll find that um, first of all, when it comes to shooting, especially using a pistol, there are so many. I'll, I had already recorded about uh, suicide, gun suicide, but I'll re-record because you know what happened. Uh, but uh, when it comes to shooting, especially pistol or uh, revolver, there are okay. There, there are I could I could say four. You could shoot yourself here. It comes out of here. And then you have to look at uh, the the deceased. Was he left-handed or right-handed? Oko was shot from the left. Now, if you are shot from, if you are left-handed, you are supposed to shoot yourself from the left. If you are right-handed, you are supposed to shoot yourself from the right. He was shot from the left. And then there is the shooting. Self-inflicted mostly is ear to ear. If you are shot from here and it comes from this side, or you are shot from here, it comes from this side, then there is a possibility somebody shot you from down. Then there is also shooting from here, coming here, or shooting from here, coming here. It shows somebody shot you from up. So be what? Oko was not shot directly. So he was shot from here, it came this side. So after Biwot shot him, he pretended to apologize. He pretended to apologize. To pre oh, I'm sorry, Mutukuf. Uh, anger overtook me. We cannot have such a good government for somebody to plan to, to, kill, to do that. But then, I'll tell you about uh, the repercussion. We, we, we had this book called uh, Betray in the City, where they say the outside of this jail is the inside of a bigger jail. Those who are guilty of Ouko's death lived a very terrible life. So Ouko, uh, Kinyanjui and Wekesa never told me how Ouko's body left State House Nakuru all the way to Gotalila. They never told me. And that is how uh, the story ends of from JKIA to Gotalila. Thank you.